Alright guys, I'm going to start the playthrough pretty soon. Um, the way that I like to go through this game, and really any Japanese game, especially visual novels, I like to let the voiced dialogue play, and then I like to speak the lines aloud. Um, that's just how I like to process it. Um, the only lines I won't be speaking are um, anything super embarrassing. <laughs> um, and I might skim through some scenes if they have a super embarrassing graphic or anything. But I'll go back in the log and I'll read the lines. <laughs> but yeah, so that's pretty much how I'm going to handle this game. Um, uh, there's lots of other Let's Plays that are probably just playing through it quick. Maybe not even listening to the Japanese lines, so I'm sure there's other ones you can you can go to if you want something a little quicker. This is going to be a little slower paced. Um, I have not played this game, so this will be a blind playthrough. Um, it'll be completely blind. Um, let's see. Uh, I did play Steins Gate 1. I also watched the anime. I didn't really like the video game, but I, that's probably because I had already known the story from the anime. So we'll see how this goes. Um, I do know, like, I know some of the character designs. I've seen a few from just from the intro, though I didn't watch the whole intro. I just saw a glimpse of a few characters. And when you start the game up, it does show like a flash of a few characters. Um, so there's some that are like, hmm, who's that? character supposed to be but um yeah we'll see we'll see when we meet them um i have played about i don't know three minutes of this on vita but i just got the ps4 version um they're doing a huge sale on psn so check that out it's um golden week sale all right let's jump into this i don't know how loud i'm gonna keep everything i want the voice volume pretty loud it might blow out your eardrums though, so let me know. Let me know how loud it actually gets. Um, I want the music soft enough where you can at least hear me. <laughs> so let's go. Hmm. Poor Maki say. Ugh. Going back to the original world line. Eight twenty one twenty ten. The hatch opened. Bright light flooded my eyes. Where was I? My eyes narrowed. I could barely make out the summer's twilight sky. I didn't want to leave. I just wanted to disappear. But someone grabbed my arm and dragged me out. Whoa, he's back already. It hasn't even been a minute, has it? Ocarine? Ocarine. <laughs> I didn't have the energy to respond to my own name. I fell to the ground and I wrapped my arms around myself. Ocarine! Mm -hmm. Mayuri ran to me and looked down, her face worried. But her kindness felt like nothing but a nuisance. Don't talk to me. Just leave me alone. Wait, you're covered in blood. What, what happened? Dad, get me a towel and water. On oh, clothes, right now. <laughs> Do you could sit me, please? Oh, can someone please tell me what's going on? Just do it now. Okay. 
Dara ran to the door that led back inside the building. Okarin, you okay? Hang in there. Don't die, please. It's fine. He's not hurt. Stop it. Just get away from me. Leave me alone. I couldn't save her. In fact, I killed her myself. Right here. Three weeks ago. I killed her. I'm a murderer? It didn't work. No matter what we do, it's it's not going to work. <laughs> It's all been decided already. It's the same. It's the same as it was with Mayuri. No matter how hard I try, it'll all end up just the same. No matter how many times I try, it'll all converge back to the same result. The process doesn't matter. Whether you time travel or time leap, you can't go back and change the results of the past. I thought I understood that cruel truth, but now I was forced to realize it again, and in the worst possible way. It's all so useless. <laughs> I knew it. I can't save Curse. I already knew this would all happen. I'm so tired. I haven't rested in so long. I'm done. <laughs> what happened, Oka? I killed her. I killed her. I'm an idiot. Everything. It's all my fault. Makise Kuriso san. He, he killed Makise Kurasu. Killed? That, that can't be true. It just can't. But Don't worry, you've got enough for one more attempt. Just leave me alone. No matter how many times I try, it'll all end up the same. What are you saying? Are you just gonna give up? Billions of lives depend on you, Uncle Okarin. Who cares if you failed once? There's just no way to save Karasu. You can't stop the world line convergence. Oops. I was just gonna see. Yep. Um, I don't know if I'll read all the tips, but I'll just check this one out. Um, okay, there we go. This term refers to an infinite number of possible worlds, the world line. However, these worlds don't exist in parallel. Only one exists at a given time. 
Everything that occurs along a world line from the past to the future has been predetermined. Thus, no matter how much you change the past along a single world line, the result will converge to the same outcome. So if you played, um, which I hope you have, played Steins Gate, basically they explained that it was all like a like a ball of yarn, like strung together, kind of. And no matter how many different strands you went to, they all end up at the same end point. The only way you can sort of get out of the world line is to make a huge change, like like a dramatic change, and then that would put you on a completely different world line. You can't change the world line that you're on, like the path, it, it, like it won't change, no matter what little thing you do. Um, ultimately, the major events are still going to happen, so you have to change something major to save somebody's life and then they'll be on another world line so that's what happened obviously at the end of Steins Gate I won't go into all the tips that's the reality of this world I learned that a long time ago I can't change anything I just have to slap some sense into him You can't do that. It's not right to force him to do this. I can't bear to see Ocarine like this. If he doesn't do it, the future won't change. Why, why does Ocarine have to change the future all by himself? That's too much for him to bear. Because only Uncle Ocarine has the power of an observer of the world line. Ocarine didn't want that. And I think even if he tried, He'd just get hurt again. It's impossible for just one person to change the world all by themselves. And that's why Steins Gate is. Mm. I understand. But I'm to I know how you feel, but I'm here for the sake of the future. I can't go back to 2036 either way, so I'm not going to give up so easily. Uncle Ocarine, I'll tell you one thing. This time machine has a finite amount of fuel. At first, I told you that it could only be used to go there and back twice. But there's actually a little more fuel than that. Even so, it can only travel about 344 days. Even if you do a one-way trip, less than a year from now, you won't be able to reach July 28th. Remember this. When that day comes, I'll go myself if I must. <laughs> Someone was saying something to me. I couldn't understand the words. I didn't want to listen to anything. I just wanted to sleep. I'm just, whoops. I don't think I missed anything major there, but... I couldn't understand the words. I didn't want to listen to anything. I just wanted to sleep. 
Just let this all end. Just let me go. Okari? Okari? Ne. Okari? Mo. Hey, Okarine. You don't have to push yourself so hard anymore, okay? It's okay to cry, Okarine. Mayu Mayushi is here for you, okay, Okarine? I <laughs> don't. I don't know if Mayuri's words were the reason why, but the tears started to flow. I decided to forget everything. Ever since that day, I stopped going to the Future Gadget Lab. Again, I'm not going to check every tip. You know what the Future Gadget Lab is, if you saw Steins Gate. It's like the this little like apartment complex that they stay in, and they make all their inventions. Ocarine and... Um, Daru and Mayuri. Absolute zero. Two thousand ten, eleven twenty three. I wonder if we're going to celebrate Christmas next month. UPX, the new symbol of Akihabara was located right in front of the right in front of the station. Okay, and I'm going to save here. This is the part that when I wasn't um, reading this aloud, I got a little lost. Um, it's like a new building. The new symbol of Akihabara is UPX. In the hall on the fourth floor, preparations have been going on all morning at the ATF. Akihabara Techno Forum Convention. Universities and labs from both inside and outside the country will work together to put on special seminars and symposiums at regular intervals. I'm just going to turn down the music a little. It's probably not as loud to you as it is to me. Um, so yeah, universities and labs from both inside and outside the country will work together to put on special seminars and symposiums at irregular event intervals. My school, Tokyo Denki University, was participating as part of its industry collaboration efforts. Students were required to attend these seminars and submit reports to their instructor. Otherwise, they wouldn't get credit for their related classes. In addition, I was supposed to help one of the lecturers, Associate Professor Izaki. I had just gotten a list from the reception desk at the shared lobby. I was waiting to check off the names of students who were coming to the lectures. There was still some time before the seminars started, so the lobby was mostly empty. None of the students on the list were here yet. I was bored, but I couldn't do anything but wait. The old me never could have imagined doing anything like this, but impressing Izaki was part of my new goal in life. Victor Chondria University. Yes, that was my new goal. Izaki did a lot of joint research projects with him, and knew a lot of people there. The best first step to getting there my brain could come up with was being his assistant. Also, this convention was holding another seminar uh, by Victor Chondria University, after the one held uh, last summer, or this summer. Of course, th that interested me too. Summer. Oh. An image of her. She was flashing through my mind. I was trying to get Victor to Victor Chondria so that I could learn about the work that Magisei Kurosu had done. I wanted to try that, to do that it myself. Of course, I wasn't a genius like Magisei Kurosu. I knew there was no way I'd be ever be able to do exactly what she did. But if I could do even 10% of what Christina did. Honestly, I'm amazed that I've recovered so well. I thought that to myself, and I chuckled, just as a voice called to me from across the lobby. New character inbound. Excuse me. <laughs> I looked up and saw a young girl approaching from the elevator hall. She was short and petite. Everything about her was small. I could find, uh, I could kind of make out a few of the curves that don't appear until after puberty. 
So at least she wasn't in elementary school, but maybe middle school? <laughs> For someone with such a cute face, uh, she clearly didn't care about her appearance. Her hair was, wasn't was styled, and it poured down her back. Even I could tell her clothes weren't very fashionable. Excuse me, where's the staff from? Um, this is the ATF seminar? Clearly not a place where a middle school girl belonged. She'd probably just come to the wrong place. I know that. How many times am I going to have to say this? Yeah. Um, this is the first time you've said anything to me. <laughs> and you're first, and you're the fourth person I've said it to since I got here. Irritated, she pulled a card out of her jacket. It was one of the IDs given out to invite a guest. Her name and the name of the workplace were written right on the front. Huh? Victor Condria University, USA Brain Science Institute. Akihabara Techno Forum. Victor Condria University, I looked at the card and then at her and then back at the card then I looked at her again. <laughs> I finally realized. Oh, so you got a Oh, so that's it. Sono cardo. Doko ni ochite tanda. Hirotte kuretan. Sono hanashi mo yon kai me yo. Oh, he tries to play it off like, oh, you took this card from somebody. Oh, well, it's good that you brought it back here. You know, oh, you found it on the ground and it's somebody else's. Oh, I've done that three times already, too. <laughs> she sighed and showed me another card. This one was a photo ID from Victor Condria University. Yeah. Yeah. It was the same ID I'd seen Kurosu holding uh, onto before the world line. Uh, before on another world line. The photo on the card, yeah, that was definitely her. Hiyajo Maho te yomuno. Maho Hiyajo. Excuse me. Maho Hiyajo. Watashi no namae, Hiyajo Maho. Kanji demo romaji demo dare mo yometa tameshi ga nai kara. Saki ni ittoko wa? That's my name, Maho Hiyajo. I'll say it to you now because nobody's ever going to be able to read it right, not in Japanese or in English. <laughs> um, and you're from Victor Condria University Middle School? <sighs> Stop messing around here. Universities don't have middle schools. <laughs> That's true. Then you skipped a bunch of grades? Unlike in Japan, it wasn't uncommon for Americans to skip grades. Kurosu had made it um, to university at age 17. Oh yeah, so you can change some stuff on the phone. I accidentally pulled it up. They have some of the people we know, including, um, I think that's Daru's girlfriend at this point. I don't know. We can change the wallpaper, which I will. Let's check them out. Metal Upa. I'll keep it as a reunion for now. Okay, so unlike in Japan, it wasn't uncommon for Americans to skip grades. Kursu had made it to university at age 17. 
So, yeah, he's thinking that she's young, but somehow she's intelligent enough to make it to that university. But still, a girl this young, working in a university lab? Can I ask you something? Oh. Sure. You're feeling pretty shocked right now, right? <laughs> Let me guess. A small child like this. I can't believe it. Right? Or are you one of those? She must be amazing to be able to do that at her age. Types. <laughs> <laughs> she got me. Look here closely. The girl, Maho Hiyajo, pointed to part of her part of the ID with her slender fingers. She was born in 1989 and it was 2010, so she's actually older than me, too. <laughs> You're 21 years old? <laughs> In other words, I'm an adult woman. I'm not in middle school, and of course, not in elementary school or daycare either. Uh-oh. And then she puffed out her chest. It wasn't much to see, but I could imagine her saying, They look bigger when I'm not wearing clothes. They're huge. <laughs> <sighs> What's that look supposed oh, to be? Yeah. Sorry, sorry, I apologize. I couldn't believe it, she was older than me. If Dara was here, he'd be dancing around screaming legal lolly for the win. Um, I will go to this tip. <laughs> for the win, net slang used to express excitement about a positive event or experience. Abbreviated FTW. Oh, and Legal Wally gets a uh, thing. What is it? Refers to a character in anime or manga who appears to be no older than an elementary score, but is in fact over the legal age of 20. Yeah, I'm not gonna read all of these, but I figure I might as well show them because then you could pause the video and read um, them. Okay. I'll probably go back and look at some of these, though. <laughs> Legal lolly for the win! Well, <laughs> uh, well, I guess it doesn't matter. I get the same thing all around the world, no matter where I go. Yeah, I'm um, sure you do. Did you just say something? Uh, no, 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 I, I didn't say anything. Still, the Brain Science Institute? That's where Kurasu worked. Which means this kid, no, this person, might actually know a lot about Kurasu. I held back the impulse to start badgering her with questions. I looked at the pamphlet with the seminar schedules. Victor Condria's lecture was the last one for the day, and was clearly intended to be the biggest one. Was this Maho Hiyajo girl going to give the lecture? Just like Kurasu had done at the summer convention? No wait, that's wrong. That never happened. Kurasu Makise never gave any lectures over the summer. That happened in the Alpha world line. In the world line I inhabited now, before the summer convention, she'd already... <sighs> Are you giving the lecture today? No, no, I'm just here as an assistant. Oh, and a translator, too. I looked at the pamphlet again and saw that the lecturer was named Alexis Leskinen. Alexis Leskinen, a professor at Victor Condria University and the chief researcher of the Brain Science Institute. What was it? Alex? Mm. 
Alexis Leskinen, I think. Oh. Sorry about that, guys. Yeah, Alexis Leskinen. Leskinen. We'll see if I remember that. Yeah. The topic is the artificial intelligence revolution, huh? Yeah, that sounds pretty interesting. If you've got the time, I'd love for you to come listen. I will. Oh, the staff room? I led Maho over to the elevator hall and showed her where the staff room was. Arigato. I had no reason to hang around her any further. I said goodbye, and just as I was about to turn around, just then, the elevator opened, a woman emerged. The instant I saw her face, every hair on my body stood on end. Uh oh. <laughs> Moeka san. Moeka Kiryu. It was all I could do to keep myself from screaming. Calm down. This is the beta world line. Mayuri is alive. Moeka is not going to kill her. But she still worked for CERN, right? I don't know if she's working for CERN on this world line. If you remember in the game, she worked for... In the first game, she worked for CERN. And she wanted to steal our uh, time machine. Our eyes met. The eyes on the other side of her glasses were as dead as ever. And it was impossible to tell what she was thinking. I frantically averted my gaze before she revealed... She realized something was wrong. She tilted her head for a second but quickly lost interest in me and turned toward Maho. Uh, no. Um... Oh, it was a oh, um, you're with the magazine, right? I'm here about that interview. Even in this world line, Moka still only spoke and faint whispers. Dr. Leskinen isn't here yet. He may be in a minute. Yes. If you want, I can go over the system until he gets here. <sighs> Thank you. <laughs> the two of them disappeared into the staff room. As I watched them leave, I took a deep breath. Whew. I tried to calm down, but it wasn't working. Kiryu Moeka, is it going to be you again? It was a terrible feeling, like a cold finger tracing the wounds in my heart. That night, when the terrorist threat shut down all the trains in Akihabara. That awful night, when I just knew something was going to happen. Are you going to do it again? Here? Whoops. Um, um... I just want to see. Oh well. Okay, yeah, so you can remove that if you want to see Moika's whole outfit or whatever. Or was I just imagining things? Was she just a magazine reporter now? Instead of a CERN rounder? No. Even if Moika was around her, we had nothing to do with CERN anymore. CERN wouldn't be watching us. 
Hmm. I took another deep breath, grabbed some of the anxiety meds in my pocket, and swallowed them down with some mineral water I'd bought ahead of time. It would take 15 minutes for them to kick in. Those 15 minutes were always rough, though. I laughed at myself a little and sat down on one of the reception desk chairs. Oh. Oops, sorry. I'm going to put down two saves. Got a first phone call, so now we got to figure out... Oops, which button? No, no, no! Load. Hopefully the phone call is still there. How do we take out the phone again? No. Okay, L. Do do do. Um. Are things going okay with uh, Mr. Seminar? There's not been an accident yet. No problem. I see, that's great! Keep going down, come on. It may be a little too hard for you to follow, my Artie. Oh, you're right. <laughs> okay, I don't want to get in your way. Bye bye. What if I had said there was a problem? I wonder what would have happened. I'm tempted to go back and try that. The table was filled with leaflets pamphlets and other things for the attendees, my eyes wandered to one of the pamphlets, the Dr. Nakabachi Theory and Genealogy of Pseudoscience. This pamphlet was for Professor Izaki's seminar, Nakabachi Theory, the paper she'd, he'd announced in Russia. That paper held the key to creating a real-time hmm. machine. On that day, July 28th, Nakabachi had stolen the paper from Kursu, his own daughter, and left with it. I knew that. Only Nakabachi and I knew that. If I flipped through the pamphlet, it was a brief introduction to the many forms of pseudoscience and fake scientific discoveries that had emerged since the start of the 20th century. On its own, it did make for interesting reading. And at the end of the pamphlet, Nakabachi's theory was introduced as nothing more than another entry in that long list of fakes. So Dr. Nakabachi's time machine theory had been completely ignored by the academic world. All the glory, fame, and power he'd wanted so badly that he was willing to get rid of his own daughter. He didn't get any of it. And I'd heard rumors that after the announcement, he'd been imprisoned in a Russian lab. To make it even funnier, he thought he was getting VIP treatment. For a short time, there were essays and interviews in um, bogus um, academic journals. Even there, it was obvious it had all gone to his head. The ironic thing was that the Nakabachi theory was completely correct and completely revolutionary. The Russian government was worried about it leaking, and the SVR was doing everything it could to keep it under wraps. Okay, I do actually want to check that out. What's the S SVR? The Service of External Reconnaissance of the Russian Federation, a.k.a. SVR. External Reconnaissance. Russia's External Intelligence Agency. Its HQ is in Yas Yasser, Novo, in southern Moscow. After the old Soviet Committee for State Security, KGB, was disbanded, the new SVR was modeled after the KGB's first directorate. There are other intelligence agencies in Russia as well, as the main intelligence directorate 
and the Federal Security Service. Each of them has their own territory and specialization. Okay. But under the surface, there was a full-scale information war beginning over the paper. The time traveler from 2036, John Tito, had told me so, which meant that it had to be true. Was World War III really going to happen? Was there no point? There was no point in thinking about it. Just a little more before the drugs kicked in, I closed my eyes. <sighs> Poor Ocarine. All right, I'll probably stop here for now. I think this is a decent place to stop. So we just got a little introduction to the story, a little bit. I feel like something big's gonna happen in the next video at the seminar. Um, we know that Russia now has most of the time travel research. That's not good. And what else happened? Nothing, nothing too major. We don't really know what Moika's deal is. She's working for a newspaper, but that's probably just a cover. Um, and then we met that new character whose name I, I completely forget. Um, the the legal lollycon. And there's a lecturer coming in who's again I'm terrible with names. Um, it'll be in the video earlier. I'll probably go back and rewatch it. But um, yeah, so we made a little bit of progress. Um, so next time we'll get the lecture. I'll probably do another video in a little bit. See ya.